I've missed out on so many great photos because I didn't understand how to edit black and white photography and you may be missing out on those great photos too. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you the one big secret to editing your black and white photography that's gonna take them to the next level. Hey guys, my name is David Johnson and on this channel, I help you level up your photography with post-processing tips, but also tips on how you can shoot better photos in the field too. Let's jump right into the editing software and look at this photo from Death Valley National Park. Now this is just a standard sand dune photo at sunset. Nothing real dynamic here. And if you're anything like me, you may have looked at this photo and been like, eh, kind of cool. I'll try it in black and white. I'll just convert it over to black and white and see how it looks. If it didn't look great, I was just like, eh, I'll just can it and didn't work out this time. You're leaving so many photos on the table if you're actually doing that. Here's why. Because you're not realizing the secret of the black and white photography elements in Lightroom. So I can just hit black and white and I'm gonna convert this over into black and white. I'm not saying that color looked bad. It does look kind of cool with the pastel tones that are occurring in the sand dunes actually. But if you look at it, it's kind of dull, it's kind of flat. What I wanna do is make this a black and white photo. So I'm just gonna convert it over into black and white. And already it looks kind of cool, but it's still kind of flat. And this is one of those photos that I would just get rid of and not really worry about in the past. But I didn't understand where they were. And you may have come down here and said, okay, you know what? I'm gonna increase some contrast, maybe bring up the highlights, drop the shadows, bring up the whites and drop the blacks to create more contrast. And if we look at the before and after, okay, it does look a little bit better, but I wanna take this to the next step. There's so much more we can do with black and white photography and editing after that fact. So if you scroll down in Lightroom so that you come to what's called the black and white mix, this is going to show you all of these colors that are still represented in this photo. The reason these are actually still colors in this photo is because digitally, your camera has recorded the colors that were present in that landscape as luminance values. Luminance values are actually values of colors represented in a grayscale. Here's a picture of a grayscale that you're seeing on your screen right now. Each of the colors, if I put this before and after back up on here, each of these colors in the image on the left are represented in the gray scale in the image on the right. So they're all still there and they all still have data within them. We just have to know how to pull that out. So what I'm gonna do is actually look at what colors are represented in this photo and work on pulling them out of the black and white photo. It's a lot like you would do with a standard image and seeing what colors you want to accentuate and what colors you don't. You're just using a black and white grayscale to do that. Now in just a second, I'm gonna show you how to use all these sliders the best way possible. But first, if you're getting any value out of this video, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're liking this video, it's informational for you, it provides value for you, consider subscribing to this channel as well. So let's look at those sliders specifically. You have to know what colors are in here. So let's look at this before and after. I can see some, maybe some purples, some blues. There are definitely some yellows and some oranges. So I'm gonna keep that in mind as I go through and edit this image. So I'm just gonna go back to the single image. And now that I know that those colors are there, what I'm gonna do is say, okay, purple. Is there any purple here? Okay, in the sky. Interesting. So I'm gonna increase the purple to make that sky a little bit brighter. Magenta probably accompanies purple a little bit. And I'm just sliding this up and down to see if there's any change in the image. If there's no change in the image, no big deal. My eyes deceived me on that. And I'm just gonna double click on that slider to bring it back to zero. Now I know there are blues, yellows, and oranges in this too. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to separate out my highlights and my shadows for more contrast in this photo. Doing so will impact that photo and bring more interest to it, but I'm also trying to accentuate the subject of this photo, which is that main peak of the sand dune in the very top. So I'm trying to create the brightest part of that photo in that section because our eyes are naturally drawn to the brightest part of the photo. So what I'm gonna do is find my orange and yellow because that's where a lot of that was showing up. 
And because I want to separate contrast, I'm just going to darken this so that it shows up better against that bright sky behind it. Remember, we pulled up the purple to brighten that sky. Now I'm going to pull down the orange to darken that sand dune peak. A lot of times yellows and orange kind of mimic each other. So I'm just going to pull down the yellow a bit to darken that as well. And just in those couple of sliders, what we've done here is we've actually darkened up this area of sand dunes in the back. So what I want to do here is actually play around with my blues. And you can notice there's a ton of blue textures and contrasts in here. I'm just going to maybe drop that blue a little bit. And then a lot of times aqua mirrors what blue does. So I'm going to drop that aqua as well. So here we have something for us to work on, maybe increase that purple a little bit to create more depth and tones in this photo. So here's a really good black and white photo of some sand dunes. Now that I've done that, now I can move forward and increase my contrast and increase my clarity to bring out even more detail in those sand dunes. And here we go, here we have a finished portion of this photo. So we started out with color, with the before here, and we wound up with a really dynamic black and white photo. I can still see here, maybe with this, I wanna increase my highlights and decrease my shadows a little bit more. So you're always making this tweak of like, okay, I see something there, I wanna create higher contrast and higher range within those tones. That looks pretty good. So here's what we wound up with. I hope this added a ton of value for you and I hope you can take this and apply it to your photography because I don't want you to leave those photos on the table and I want you to come out with more and better photos in the future. If you want more editing tips on how you can take your photos to the next level, click or tap the card showing up on your screen right here. Thanks so much for watching.